Station. Hello, I'm John Garvin, the writer and director, and I'm here with... Sam Whitwer. I play Deacon St. John in Days Gone. Yeah, and yes. we're here to talk about the alternate path demo. So we did two demos for E3 this year. One you guys saw at uh, the Media Showcase, and this one we showed behind closed doors on, on the floor at E3. And so for the first time, we're releasing it online so that everybody can kind of take a look at it. And I thought I'd just talk a little bit about, you know, what the differences are um, and just kind of like just show you what we were trying to accomplish this year. Yeah, I mean, the most obvious difference so far is it's the last one was nighttime during the rain and this is daytime during the snow. Yeah, and that, you know, and, that, and it's not just cosmetic. And I think that's one of the things we really wanted to emphasize, you know, because this, this, this time we're showing sort of a day in the life of Deacon. You see he's on the drifter bike here. Um, we wanted to show a little more of the bike riding and how the weather can kind of impact that. So we have this drifting mechanic, right? You see him right. kind of slipping and sliding around a little Changes bit. Changes the handling of the bike. Um, that's really interesting. Now, there were wolves there last time, John, and these wolves would pursue you down this road, and then Deacon had to turn his back, shoot a wolf, and he got clotheslined close right yeah, up there, yeah, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, exactly. So this time you see that he wasn't being chased by the wolves. That's a dynamic event that can just, that just, you know, it's just, a, that can happen or not. It just depends on, on when you're playing the game. Interesting. And this yeah. time Deacon saw the ambush and he was able to avoid it. So he kind of comes up and around and behind so them. So does weather impacts whether these creatures show up or not in daytime, nighttime, all that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. So especially the freakers, they come out, they're mostly nocturnal, but they will come out as the weather gets colder. They become stronger in the cold. Right. And so that will, you know, again kind of change up the way the game plays that's very very uh, I, I kind of love that you decided to do this as a demo to show two completely different iterations on the same exact mission in the game yes exactly so we wanted to have uh, you know this the job is basically the same Deacon hears that his buddy's in trouble mm -hmm. rides out to save his life and you know as you can see here this is a completely different experience from what we showed in the first demo the first one Deacon gets clotheslined um, and it sounded very painful, by the way. Oh, that. that looks, speaking of painful, um, okay, so <laughs> the combat in this game is fairly brutal. John, you want to talk about that a little well, bit? Well, we just wanted to make it as, you know, as realistic as possible. So, yeah, we're not holding back on that at all. Um, and, you know, and Sam's done most of his own stunt work for this. And I can tell you that when we're on the performance stage and we're capturing that stuff, we just try to make, keep it real, right? Right, right. Well, um, right. There, there was sort of a decision made at some point. What we we've, we've been work. I've been work I've been on the project for what two or three years now. Yeah, I think three years. And uh, and so early on, I think there was a more. What were we? It, uh, it was more Kurt Russell <laughs> and sort of a two-fisted thing, and and then it, it turned into, hey, let's yeah. take this quite seriously. And what that required is a lot more taking this combat stuff um, and, and showing the horror of the violence that happens and, and, and it were this type of circumstance to take place. I mean, realism, weirdly enough, is the thing we keep going back to when it comes to the, not just the stunts, but also the performance style. I think, you know, it was very important that it doesn't seem like a bunch of actors, uh, you know, saying lines. It was yeah. all very incidental. And we, you know, we wanted the world to sort of reflect that as well. So yeah. you saw there that, you know, Deacon broke into that emergency vehicle What's and this? found some supplies. So this is what we're calling our survival vision. Survival so you saw vision. that earlier when he was looking at Manny's bike on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just kind of a way of, of seeing tracks in the world and sort of imagining what might have happened. Mm -hmm. And here, I, I just wanted to point out that you're seeing in this part of the demo that there are freakers there. There weren't there before because yeah. it wasn't snowing. It was, you know, and it was getting lighter out. It wasn't getting darker like it is. And so, um, you know, it changes up the way you can play through the level. And what is this? What is so, <laughs> we call this the meat wall. The meat wall. Yeah, and it's not just there, you know, to you know make the guys who put them up to, to seem evil. They're there for a purpose because, again, freakers are living creatures. They eat. That's their primary. That's their primary thing. They want to eat. And so you hang these dead freakers up, uh, and it, you know, and anybody, any freaker, rather than coming into their camp like you see here, they would actually we'll stop. stop and snack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then the same thing with this freaker that they've hung upside down. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bear trap underneath it, and um, they use that because a freaker will come, be attracted to the meat, and then hit that hit that trap. Interesting. Another another thing you just saw, by the way, is that is that, that tin can the tin can trap that you yeah, stumbled, that's a, that's an alarm that the marauders will put up. And this is again some of the things that marauder camps just do. And you find these marauder camps throughout the world. You'll find 
traps like that, and then if you're careful and you're paying attention, you can avoid them. Because in the first demo, Deacon didn't avoid it, and he set off that alarm. Right. Now, now this is the same tactic that he used last time. He throws the rock to get someone to lure lure him over and have him step in the very trap. But this one plays out a little bit differently than last time. One of the things that, that struck me, and we've talked about this, obviously, as we've shot, but there's, there's an effort of the other uh, marauders to get this guy to shut up, and he won't. Yeah, and so in the in the first demo, you, you Deacon's heading on down the trail, and you can hear that happening behind him. Right. And this time, we're showing what happens. So, you know, he's watching everybody react to this poor guy trapped in the you know in that bear trap, and she just is like, "Shut up, shut up, shut up," and then just loses it and shoots the guy. Right. Right. And of course, in the meantime, Deacon you know is crafting a Molotov and just takes them all. Out. Right. Oh boy, this dude. Ow. Ow. Ah. So yeah, so again, it's like in the pre in the previous demo, Dem Deacon would have gone off to the trail down to the right. This time he's going to head this way. He follows the tracks, uh, and comes under now, a sniper attack. Now let me ask you something about the survival. Okay, there's a sniper attack coming, but uh, the uh, survival vision is if you don't say upgrade your survival vision, can you miss clues? I mean, are there things that that you would get if you upgraded your survival vision yes. that would help you complete the mission better? Exactly, and you have to, you know, we have a whole skill tree and it's all mm -hmm. tied to the experience that you can earn as you're just playing through the game and, and then you can upgrade those and things. What's happening here? We got a freaker tied to a tree. Yeah, so this is another type of trap that marauders will set. They will set, you know, they will basically chain freakers um, to the perimeter of their camps and they use them as kind of an alarm system. Mm -hmm. um, and then that, you know, you saw that marauder there, he was just tormenting the poor freaker and then yeah. so Deacon kind of take it, takes advantage of that. Well, and you think for a moment that Deacon is the guy, he's, he's sort of helping the freaker by, you know, getting the guy that taunted him. Like, no, no. And then he's going to take the freaker out right afterward. Exactly. And this is a bit of uh, silent sniping using the crossbow. Yeah, so this whole sequence at the end plays out very differently. In the first demo, you saw Deacon use a swarm. He weaponized a swarm, lured them into the camp, and then they kind of did the work for him. There's no swarm in this run through. Right. So the player really has to go in and use what we're calling our strategic sandbox combat. And that's just, you know, stealth mechanics and setting and using traps, whole arsenal of weapons. You see, there's a variety of weapons that Deacon's going to use through this, including the crossbow. You know, he crafts his own bolts. Um, and you know he's got to he's got to figure out how to get up to Manny uh, just you know using his combat skills right. instead of doing it strategically. So straighten me out those those bonfires were those there in the previous demo? No, they weren't. Right. So that's another big difference is that if you come here during the day, you know it's like in the in the media showcase demo there was like kind of a fight club thing going right, on. Right. They were they were punching each other <laughs> and everybody was just sort of getting into it. Nobody's really paying yeah, attention it, to what's it, going on. Yeah. And now it's getting dark and it's cold out. So you know they built these bonfires. So. You know, and again, it's just, it, it's not just a cosmetic change in the way the... Well, it's the, cold, right? Yeah, it's, they, it's because it's they cold. They have to build some... So it yeah. changes the way the, the, the marauders behave in the level. Mm -hmm. well, that's very... Again, this is part of the reason why I love that you did this as a demo, because the, the, the behavior of all of these things, not just the freakers, but the marauders, everything, there's a logic to it. You can track why they're doing the things that they're doing, um, and you can use it to your advantage in the gameplay. That's that's kind of what I like about this so much. That, that and that's really what we wanted to showcase this year is that it's an open world game, and you know everything you see around here. And again, we're only playing this two different ways. Um, you saw that waterfall way up there off in the distance. There's a bridge that goes in front of that. If you had a sniper rifle and enough ammunition, you could have driven your bike all the way up there. There's mm -hmm. trails that go all the way up there. And you could have used your sniper rifle to take out this entire camp because it would have taken them a while to figure out where the shots were coming from and to get to you. So, you know, that's a different way to play. There's another way to play, by the way, where you could have just stealth in through the entire camp if you had the skills to do it. And you could have just taken everybody out silently or, or almost everybody. Mm -hmm. And then you could have gotten up to where Manny's being held using a different route and, you know, just stealth killed that guy. There's no reason that you have to come in and run and gun it like, um, like Deacon is doing here. Hey, how, how scarce is ammunition? Because I see him switching uh, from a bunch of weapons, and I, when we saw this demo, when I, when I came in and saw day three, one of the things that I, that I really enjoyed was I was sitting next to you, and the driver was playing the game, and at some point I saw you shift in your chair, and you leaned forward, and I heard you say, oh man, uh-oh. And I'm like, whoa, what's going on? He's like, he's going to get killed. Oh, I'm right. like, whoa, oh. <laughs> and I, I, I leaned forward. I was like, oh, I guess there's some real danger. And one of the things was that he was running out of ammunition. Um, and he was trying to go pick up ammo yes. from the dead uh, He was looking for marauders, ammo, yeah. but. 
but and he I've was seen, under fire. So when we were so. at E3, we had a whole team with us, and everybody played it slightly differently. So it just shows you that it's not scripted at all. Yeah. Um, and then this Rager bear. Oh yeah, boy. the infected bear. The infected bear. That's, yeah, yeah, that's not what you want to see. Well, that, we, thought that would be a, <laughs> we thought that would be a good way to end the demo is to show that it's just one, for Deacon's life, it's just one darn thing after, after another, yeah, yeah. right? You're going to save your buddy, you get clotheslined, you get attacked by wolves, or, you know, you, you think you're finally done, you rescued your, you, you know, you've gone through all this stuff, and then suddenly, Rager Bear. Right. Well, as, as you said to me, it's not just about exploring an open world as it is the open world coming after you, the open world seeking you out, trying to... Yeah, exactly. That's our tagline. Um, in Days Gone, you don't have to go seeking out trouble. The world comes for you. Trouble is looking for you. All right, Sam, thanks a lot. Thanks, John. It's been fun. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the demo, and uh, we'll talk more about it soon. Station.